Well, hey there. We're at the TA in uh, Prescott, Arkansas. And today I thought I'd talk about one of my favorite things to talk about, fuel mileage. Um, and how this truck, this 2014, I'll go ahead and give you the specs for it. It's a 2014 Freightliner Cascadia Evolution. And it has, it's a little different than most because I know I've mentioned this in some of the other videos, but maybe some of uh, people that have came lately haven't heard it. It's got a direct drive 10 speed, 250 rear end, and it's a 6x2. So that means only the front drive is powered. The, the back, very back axle is just a dead axle. It's like a trailer axle. So this truck, since I bought it, I set the trip when I left the dealership and it's got 256,000 miles on it that I put on it uh, and it's averaged just over nine miles a gallon for those 256,000 miles I think it's 9.05 so just over nine you know it'll go up in the summer down in the winter I get into eights here I just I think I yeah I fueled up in Illinois and uh, I got into eights eight seven something like that I was oh man I was in up by Milwaukee last week. That's actually not bad. Uh, wind was howling like a madman. Five degrees when I woke up. I was, had to have been 30 or 40 mile an hour winds. I mean, it, it, I was frozen. Um, but yeah, this truck's averaged over nine miles a gallon that whole lifetime. I'll tell you, my best fuel mileage was 11.92, and that was for 751 miles. That was from Albuquerque, New Mexico, to Kingman, Arizona. Uh, yeah, I, feel, I fueled up in Albuquerque, went down towards El Paso, took the road that shoots over, cuts off the corner at I-10, went to Tucson, made stops, went to Phoenix, made stops, and then I shot up, up towards Kingman, and I fueled up there, and the reason I fueled up there is because I had a stop in Vegas, then I went down to San Diego, and went back... I think I, I think that might have been the one that went all the way up to Redding. Anyway, what I was trying to do is put as much fuel I could in uh, Kingman because it's cheaper there than Nevada. It's definitely cheaper there than California, and I think I might have had to put 60 gallons in it, California, down there in uh, Button Willow. If you know, that's just oh, right there on what 15, just not too far from Bakersfield. I think I'd put some fuel in it. But yeah, so that was uh, 751 miles and only used 63 gallons of fuel. So that was my best ever. So some free things you can do to improve, to improve your fuel mileage. Doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, slow down. Plan your trips. As I mentioned last video, how I got pulled over. Uh, yeah, I was, I had, I had plenty of time. My deliver, or my pickup was the next day. I was finished. Had plenty of time. Why, what, what's the hurry in getting there so you can just sit and wait till the next day? So drive slow, earn more dough. And, uh, uh, yeah, I just like to say that. Um, that's the most important. Well, that's not the most important, but that's probably the easiest thing to do is just slow down. Every mile you slow down is one tenth. So if you drive 55 instead of 65, you're going to gain one mile a gallon. That's just the proven phys proven physics of it. Uh, cruise control. I don't use cruise cruise control unless I'm on dead flat ground. If I'm going through hills, just I just try to keep steady pressure on that pedal. And if it slows down going up the hill, who cares? You'll make it down on the other side just like a roller coaster. Go down. Float back up it. Go down, float back up it. Uh, let's see. What else? Tighten up your trailer gap. As I mentioned, this is an Evolution. It's got the large fairings that stick off the back of the sleeper. The only thing about that is you have to watch your turns. You can't really make a 90 degree turn or you'll rip them off. You know, you see guys that are ripped off all the time. Uh... I have came close to touching that rubber on the trailer. It's not as hard as you'd think. So with it slid forward, be mindful that it uh, it will uh, it will rip them off. I guess everybody's seen that. Um, another thing about it is getting better fuel mileage is uh, longer engine life and just wear and tear in general on your truck. I, 
think it was Cummins made a study, or they had a study, or I heard this somewhere. They said an engine isn't worn out by the miles driven; it's by the by the gallons burned. I think you guys have been around a long time. Uh, you know, back in the let's say back in the nineties, late nineties. You know, you had the main ones were Cat, Cummins, and Detroit. Well, a guy I worked for, he liked all Caterpillars, except he had one Detroit. Well, the Caterpillars seemed like they would only last 750,000 miles, maybe 800,000 miles. That Detroit, you know, he it would it would go a million, too. And that's just the way it is. And I think it's from fuel mileage. Um, I remember I'd drive a 379 and get around 5. If I drive, it was in a big classic XL with a Detroit. It goes a 99 Freightliner. It would get six and a half, and I wouldn't drive any different. It was just that engine was so much more fuel efficient. So yeah, they claim an engine won't wear out because of the miles put on it. It's the gallons burned, and I guess that's, I mean, let's just, I don't know if this is a good analogy or not, but let's say the ring and a ring around a piston is like your roof. What's more, what's more likely to leak? If you're up on a up on a roof with a eyedropper or up up on a roof with a garden hose pouring on it which is more likely a leak it's the same with an injector firing down onto a piston what's the one more likely to leak around the rings and get in your oil and and uh, thin your oil out the one that's pouring fuel into it or the one that's dripping fuel into it so i don't know if that's a good analogy or not but that's what they claim uh what's another thing uh motor oil um, I know probably a lot of fleets run 1540 and everything. This is this engine recommends 10W30. I use a uh, Dello. That's what I've used since I've had the truck. Chevron makes it Dello. It's pretty salty. They're proud of it, but um, with these trucks you can do extended drains, and I do oil samples, and they come back good. So we know what's going on there. Uh, let's see what else can we do. Well, some of the stuff that's not free, I have my other trailer today, this week. Like I mentioned, I switch them. So my other one has side skirts, wheel covers, trailer tail. Um, this one, all I've done with this one is move the license plate out of the air. If you guys have heard of Henry Albert, he is, uh, I don't know how he's affiliated, but he's on um, Freightliner's Team Run Smart. They have some kind of, something worked out where they... He gets a new truck, and I don't know what their, I don't know what his payment is. I'm sure they don't give it to him. But anyway, he gives them feedback from that truck, and he said that a group of engineers came up with if you, every van trailer the plate hangs down in the air, right? So what he did was he moved it up into the bumper, and that's what I did with both of my trailers. And they claimed I haven't figured up it would change with fuel price. But they claim that would that would save a half a gallon of fuel a day. Just moving that license plate out of the airstream. Which makes sense. I mean you put your hand out the window, it's gonna catch a lot of air. Um what else could you do? Oh, lift axle. I was thinking about putting a lift axle on my other trailer. That's about the only thing that I haven't done to it. This trailer has a nose cone on it, a great big one, the biggest one they have because the truck I used to pull this trailer with was a flat top. Oh man, it was hard to pull down the road. Um, check your truck for boost leaks. You know, check your charge air cooler, make sure it's not got a crack in it. Uh, trailer tails, uh, they're great. Unfortunately, Stemco doesn't make them anymore. I tried to buy one for this trailer and they they said all they're gonna do from now on is their uh, bearings and things like that, their aerodynamic line. They've um, put the kibosh on that. Rocket tail. Now, if somebody knows something about rocket tail, that's what I'm looking into now. They are a company, I think, out down in Southern California, and they make a different kind of tail, but I don't know if it's as good as the trailer tail. I love my trailer tail. I wish I could get another one. If anybody has any information on rocket tail, let me know. I've seen some fleets doing that. Mesilla Valley transport they have a big test track and they test all that stuff so if you guys are interested in any aerodynamic aerodynamic things they've got all their results their uh, independent testing they um, so it's all they've got all the results for that um as i mentioned this this truck gets nine miles a gallon 
I looked at the national fuel average today. It's 273 as of Monday. It changes every Monday. And I thought I'd just give you the the difference in a truck that gets 9 miles a gallon to a truck that gets 5 miles a gallon. And there's lots of them doing it. Like I mentioned, I, I can't remember if I mentioned or not, but the average of all trucks out here, I guess they take all the IFTA reports and put all the fuel and divide it between the trucks, and it's 5.98. That's the average fuel of every truck out here as a whole, 5.98. So when I pulled, when I was driving a, a big Peterbilt pulling reefer, it always got 5.2. It was a, that was a 2002, had the 6NZ in it. Um, oh, that guy had so had a bunch of Peterbilts through the year, two WSs, and I think he had one 5EK. Anyway, they all seem like they got right at, um, you know, 5.2. So there's still a lot of them out there doing that. So if the difference between 9 mile a gallon to 5 mile a gallon at fuel prices today is $24,267. And, you know, I, I mean, I love big fancy Peterbilt's just as much as the next guy and I know there's people that get very emotional when you talk about going slow and they're like that's not a real trucker well I was like I'm in this game to make money and that's it I'm I'm not out here to look cool with my truck I'm cool enough without my truck <laughs> I'm kidding but um no I'm in this game to make money and that's it I don't drive junk all my stuff's got brand new tires looks nice um, but no, this is, this is about making money. This is not a hobby. This is, this is a, this is a business and that's how I treat it. So yeah, $24,000 difference. And I'm just not willing to take that kind of beating for fuel at this time of my life. I'm trying to make all the money I can so I can get out of this truck. I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to just drive it part time. I'm going to keep my, I'm going to keep my company. That's the main goal here is get out of debt and work whenever you want to work not when you have to all the time that's the main, that's the end goal here for me now you see guys take he doesn't make very many videos anymore i don't think um life is good uh tim gorley that's his name he had a big 370 no it was a 389 it was a new peterbilt and he used to make videos and he was a different stage of his life than me see he was what i was want, what i want to get to he's older guy he's probably out of debt I think he's divorced, his kids are grown up, totally different stage of his life than I'm at. He had that big Peterbilt, and he, you know, he liked to, it was a big long wheelbase, he had chrome all over it, beautiful truck, I love, I love trucks like that, I just don't, I'm not willing to take the beating on fuel on them right now, because, because I'm trying to be as efficient as I can be right now, that's the reason, not that I don't like them, I just don't want to pay for them, but I think people would watch, watch him on YouTube. Like, he would go where it's legal, say South Dakota, where the speed limit's 80 miles an hour. You know, he'd be going 80 miles an hour. That truck couldn't have been getting four mile a gallon. But he didn't care. He already, he was already set in life, I'm sure, but I'm sure there's young people that were out there thinking, well, I can do that too. But it's hard to, it's hard to take care of your family, especially my wife works part-time, so pretty much what I make is what we live on. So I, you know, I have to be efficient. Um, but not everybody's situations like mine, but maybe if this is something that interests you, then, you know, these things might help you a little bit. Uh, I guess that's about it. I mean, pretty much just, it's just little things. It's, it's driving habits. It's things like, well, pre-pass. That's another, I got pre-pass that saves fuel. Um, say you got to take your break. It's, it's just all the little things add up. Not one thing will do it. You go up to the top of a hill to take your break instead of at the bottom of a hill, especially when you have a heavy load and you got to work your way all the way back up that hill. Just stop at the top of one, just float down it and get going again. Little things like that. So I hope somebody got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.